Hi, I'm Amanda Jane Woodall and welcome to my fashion school. So today, you know I am obsessed with fashion history and in particular I love to talk to you about British culture and how Britain impacted the fashion world. So I was spending a lot of time, probably too much, um, indulging in fashion weeks and just really romanticizing all the collections, finding out about their stories. And this led me to a very specific campaign and it gave me the idea. So today we are going to be talking about the iconic brand of Britain. It's Burberry. History. T Burberry and Sons was established in 1856 by skilled country draper Thomas Burberry. At the age of 21, he opened his own clothing emporium in Basingstoke where they sold outdoor protective garments for agriculture and sportswear. After years of selling clothing to farmers, he realised that when they wore their smocks, the oil from the sheep's wool would soak into the fibres, creating a waterproof fabric. He used this knowledge to make waterproof threads, which were woven into a fabric that was very durable. The fabric was named Garbadine and it remains to be at the heart of the success of the brand. Thomas set up his London store in 1891 and he sent his son out with samples of Garbadine to wealthy businessmen who then wanted it commissioned to make their outdoor winter coats. The garments were made in factories and the women that worked at the factories called themselves the Burberry Girls and they were paid seven shillings per garment. And it is said that Thomas Burberry was a very fair and kind man for the era and he sourced the best lighting for his factory so that the women could sew in comfort. Burberry and Garbadine featured in some highly significant historical moments. In 1907, Burberry clothed the first Arctic explorers, such as Sir Ernest Shackleton and F.G. Jackson, on their missions to map out and discover the South Pole. In 1914, war broke out and the invention of the trench coat was born. Thomas Burberry sent his designs for an officer's raincoat to the war office who commissioned Burberry to make military uniforms. And again in World War II, the brand stepped up to make protective garments for soldiers. In 1919, aviators Alcock and Brown wore Burberry coats on their first transatlantic flight. And although they had a rough landing in Ireland, they felt warm and dry and comfortable in their garments. Another signature of the brand was the lining, which was a very distinctive beige, white, red and black check and a Paris buyer further elevated the status of the check during the 1960s when she began experimenting with the fabric and used it to make an umbrella. She took the product to Burberry themselves and they absolutely loved the concept. So they started to make items that featured this pattern on the outside of the garments. And these fashions were taken up by wealthy celebrities and even royalty until in the early 2000s when the brand received some really unexpected controversy. Reputation. So Burberry's early reputation was to clothe explorers and soldiers offering protection to customers with its functional luxury. In around 2002, a new culture emerged in Britain that the media labelled as chavs. 
Now these were seemingly men and women who were unemployed, uneducated and unruly. They were commonly seen as intimidating by upper class society and the newspapers made the stereotypes worse by constantly printing stories about their antisocial behaviour. By today's standards, it's widely thought that this chav label was really unhelpful and judgmental, although at that time it was a well-used derogatory term. And this culture came with a very distinctive dress code, which was sportswear, trainers, designer shirts and caps and the Burberry pattern was seen as a high status symbol of luxury and at first Burberry kind of monopolised on this. They lowered the prices and increased the amount of check in their clothing so that it could be more affordable for all people. But this was actually a really bad business decision because it just alienated their wealthy clients who did not want to be associated with the Chav label. And establishments even started banning people who wore the Burberry check as it had become a sign of antisocial behaviour. So in essence, the brand was completely demonised. Renewal. In 2006, CEO Angela Ahrens was brought in to combat Burberry's reputation issues. She began by removing the check from 90% of the clothing and she raised the price point to be more in line with competitors such as Ralph Lauren and Gucci. Alongside creative director Christopher Bailey, they created a highly successful digital marketing campaign and this saw the brand becoming the first clothing brand that hit 10 million likes on Facebook. They had a vision to make Burberry fully digital end to end so that people could access the brand and its clothing anywhere, anytime and from any device. They wanted to remain consistent and looked back at the roots of what had made the brand successful. And they celebrated the original colours of Burberry, which were camel, white, red and black, and also spent time on their techniques of hand sewing and tailoring to make really high quality functional garments. And Christopher Bailey was really inspired by his Yorkshire roots where he grew up alongside craftspeople who liked to make things but he also enjoyed that instant feedback you could get from the comments of his customers on social media and he used the critique to improve the areas of the brand that people actually wanted to see. In 1994, the brand had very cleverly aligned itself with Chinese distribution and production. And this meant that in 2016, the brand's popularity exploded as there was an increased demand from wealthy Asian markets. Ricardo Tishi took over the brand in 2018 and he had a very different approach. He wanted to look more at gender expression and feminism. His roots growing up with eight sisters and his mum had given him inspiration and he saw women like nature as powerful, intense and romantic. And he also tapped into the re-emergence of street style and created a monogram logo that could compete with brands like Fendi. Future. So the Burberry client is now seen as liberal, bold and eccentric and the brand has done exceptionally well in the retail market. It's the number one luxury brand in Britain and has survived all the difficult financial climates. The brand's success lies in its ability to remain consistent, focused and balanced within the fashion sector. They have managed to diversify the brand so that it appeals to professionals, 
very wealthy clients and also has an introductory affordable price level. And this means that they have been very successful in both the accessories and apparel market, as well as branching out into things like children's wear and fragrance. As a luxury brand, they do encourage continuity of wear and items like their trench coat are meant to last a lifetime. However, disappointingly in 2018, it was reported that they were burning their excess stock and this was to stop it being resold at a cheaper price. They have stated a five year commitment to improve workers' rights and workplace conditions. And this has seen them invest into areas like Latin America, India and Southeast Asia, as well as forming an advisory committee to ensure best practices. As fashion designers, we can learn a lot from Burberry about being consistent and revisiting your initial ideas until you develop them to their fullest potential. The creative direction of the company has consistently pushed for a relook at the heritage of the brand and maybe this can encourage us to look at our old works and revisit them instead of being part of this throwaway society. So we have come to the end of this video but I will see you again in my follow-up videos when we're going to be turning this beauty into something brand new. At the age of 21, he opened a claw, 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 <laughs> like a horse. <laughs> At 21, he opened his own clothing in four, in four, Oh, it's going to be one of those days.